Let's use 3D Camera Tracker with some generative fill and rotoscoping to create some epic results. Let's dive into it. All right, so I'm gonna do some 3D camera tracking today. I have a video here of a woman on a street in Berlin. So I'm gonna grab a screen grab, probably about right here. I'm gonna go to Composition, Save Frame As, File, and I'm gonna bring that into Photoshop Beta. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a nice portion here of from one building to the other, where I'm gonna put my sign, and I'm gonna click on Generative Fill, and I'm gonna add my prompt here. And then clicking on this little icon next to the prompt box will pop up the reference image feature. So I'm gonna click on choose image. If you're gonna use this feature, you actually need rights to the image. So don't just go on Google and take an image and then make something yours. This is actually an example of an image that I generated from another image generator. So technically I'm able to use this image. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna click on generate. Before we get any further, I wanna give a big shout out to my first post-production insider, PG Johnson. If you guys wanna be post-production insiders then check out my Patreon page or my YouTube membership page. You can get exclusive tutorials, early releases to my tutorials, plus get a shout out on these videos and much more. Hope to see you there. Check out the links below if you wanna be a member. See, it comes up with a nice couple options here. So we're starting to get somewhere. If I wanna generate more, I could just hit generate and then three more. I like this one a lot. It has a little rustic look to it. So I'm gonna go with this one. So now isolating this, I'm just going to convert to smart object and then rasterize this. And then from here, I'm gonna click select and mask. And then using the selection tool, I'm just going to select my sign here. And once I have my sign selected, I can hit delete and delete all the other background. And now I have it on its own layer. So now let's bring that back into After Effects. And going back to my main comp, I'm just gonna drag that Berlin layer. From here, I could actually just resize it and get it to where I want it to be. I think right about there looks good. So now obviously it needs to be color corrected because if you look here, there's kind of a shade here and she's in the sun. So we're not really working with any shadows or any lights. It's kind of just in a uh, clear shadow. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna make my sign a 3D layer. So I'm gonna make that a 3D layer and then I'm gonna right click and go to new light. And from here, I'm gonna create a environment light and then hit okay. Okay, and obviously this is way overexposed because it's at 400%. So I'm gonna just make this 100. Okay, I'm gonna actually lower that even more because it is in the shadows a little bit. So that looks pretty good. And I could also add a Lumetri color effect to my Berlin layer, color correct a little bit more. So if I wanted to desaturate it a little bit, since it's in the shadows, I could cool it off. So now that we have our sign in the right place and color corrected, now we're gonna go to motion tracking. So from here, I'm gonna click on my video layer. I'm just gonna isolate this for now. And we're gonna right click and go to track and stabilize, track camera. And this is just gonna analyze for a while. So I'll speed this up for you. All right, so once my 3D camera tracker is all done, you can see that it comes up with a bunch of different points here. And see, in this case, I wouldn't use mocha tracking because this is actually a gimbal shot and they're actually moving forward in 3D space. So anytime there's something in 3D space that I would wanna overlay, I would use the 3D camera tracker. So I'm gonna click on create solid in camera and I'll take a look at that solid and I'll just make sure that it looks good. To me, it looks really good. Looks like it's in the right spot. So then I'm just gonna take my Berlin sign and I'm gonna pick whip and hold shift and connect it to my solid layer. Now hiding the solid layer, you can see my Berlin sign change uh, size a little bit. That's due to the parenting, that's fine, we could fix that. But you know, the motion looks really good, as you can see. So from here, so from here I'm gonna scale it up. So now comes the ending here where we have to rotoscope our subject to get her in front of the Berlin sign. So from here, I'm just gonna duplicate my video clip. I'm gonna move that to the front composition. All right, so if I bring my opacity down temporarily and I just look to where kind of she starts to cross over the sign, probably right about here, trim my clip to right there. 
I'll double click on this top layer here. And then I'm gonna grab my rotor brush or I can hit option W. And if I wanna make my brush bigger, I can hit command and move my mouse left or right and it makes it bigger or smaller. So from here, I'm just gonna select my subject because she is swinging her hair a bit and there's a lot of motion blur. And hair is one of the hardest things to rotoscope. So keeping in mind that I'm going to select use motion blur. And if I want to change this to the refine edge tool, I can hit option W and I'm just gonna refine the edges of my subject here right around her hair. And if I look at my alpha here down here on my toggle alpha overlay, or I could hit option six. This is kind of what my alpha looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so then once my rotoscope is done, it'll look something like this. So now adding a slight bit of camera lens blur to my sign and a little bit of final adjustments, here's my final result.